Throughout the Second World War, one of the most serious crimes a member of the armed forces and military could commit was desertion. Dereliction of duty was, during the First World War, a crime which was punishable by execution at the hands of the British Army, and these men became victims of the shot-at-dawn executions. The British even executed teenagers, who had lied about their age to join the fight on the Western Front. However, during the Second World War, the German army and Adolf Hitler saw desertion in the same way. There was even a collection of German soldiers who were executed for their desertion at the end of the war, when the Germans had surrendered. But this was a very crazy story. On the 13th of May 1945, two German deserters from the Kriegsmarine were shot. Join us today as we look at their execution, and the execution of the German soldier desertions. And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. During World War II, there were over 22,000 German soldiers who were sentenced to death for desertion, and around 15,000 of these were either executed on a firing range, or they were taken to guillotines around Germany, and were beheaded. 5,000 other people were sentenced to death for what was known as defeatism, and for subverting national defence. This was a crime which encompassed many different things, from criticising Hitler and the Nazi government, to just assuming that the war was over, that the German army had failed to defeat its enemies. Today there are a number of German cases in which are being subjected to pardons because of the executions which were carried out in this manner. But it was clear inside of Nazi Germany what the punishment would be for those who were said to have deserted from their post. It was stated that the soldier can die but the deserter must die and as the Second World War turned against the German army following defeats at Stalingrad and also the Allied invasion of Normandy, the question of desertion became a serious issue for the German army. The problem was getting worse, and by the end of the conflict, there were over 100,000 German soldiers who deserted from their position. These were men who turned their backs on the conflict and abandoned their battalions, fighting on either the Eastern Front or against the Allies to the West. Many returned to Germany, but there was a lot of strong action taken against these men. One man, Stefan Hampel, when he saw the slaughter of Jews inside of Belarus, burned his German army uniform and even joined the Germans' enemies, fighting as part of a Polish resistance group. He was arrested, but despite being condemned to death, evaded the hangman's noose, the firing range or the guillotine. Lots of these men were executed, without much evidence, and the majority were shot on sight by commanders inside the military. It was said that military justice was above all political justice, serving to stabilise Nazi power and to prolong the war. Another deserter, a man named Baumann, somehow managed to escape France, and he was then wearing civilian clothes and armed with a stolen flashlight and pistol, and he was arrested when he was caught at a border crossing. He was in June 1942 sentenced to death in the name of the German people, but his father somehow managed to get his sentence commuted to time imprisonment. However, he was then forced to serve inside of a punishment battalion on the Eastern Front. However, there was, in particular, a series of executions carried out at the end of the Second World War on the 13th of May 1945. This took place five days after the Nazis had surrendered to the Allies, and after the Wehrmacht had also surrendered. But this case relates to an illegal court-martial that occurred, and a group of disarmed German officers who had been kept under Allied guard, and who were acting as a jury and also the judge. The Allied soldiers inside of the Netherlands and Amsterdam used the German officers to hold a trial against two former German deserters who were from the Navy or the Kriegsmarine. These men were named Bruno Dorfer, and Rania Beck. Both of the men had deserted from the Navy, and they did this like many other Germans did at the end of the war. But the Allied authorities held the trial with German prisoners of war serving as the judges, and this all took place inside of an abandoned Ford Motor Company assembly plant near to Amsterdam. This was at the time a prisoner of war camp was being overseen by the Canadian Army. During this trial, it was stated that under a dubious interpretation of international law, 
Canadian military authorities permitted a continuation of the German military structure after the demise of the Third Reich. German assistance was indispensable in the disarmament, concentration and evacuation of the German armed forces within Holland. Unfortunately, disinterested Canadian military authorities also left German military in control of order and discipline. German commanders and military judges applied a military law warped by National Socialism. The German prisoners of war found Bruno Dürfer and Ranier Beck guilty of desertion. They then condemned them to death. But this was an illegal court that had no legal standing at all. And following this, the POWs then gathered a firing squad made up of their own men to carry out the death sentence. The Canadian army then even gave over rifles to the German POWs and also a three-ton truck which was passed to them. The men were even given an escort by a platoon of Canadian soldiers and they were taken towards a firing range where the firing squad had been gathered. But what is strange is that the Canadian army and the Allies allowed their enemy to take the lives of some of their own soldiers when a state of war at the time did not exist as the war had came to an end in Europe. The execution did take place, and the two deserters were executed, being shot dead. There was some justification by the Canadians for this event, and it may have been done and allowed to happen due to fear. The Canadians may have believed that they had to get the German forces on side as they were worried about them rebelling. They had the huge task of disarming and evacuating the German POWs and forces in the Netherlands. They needed them on the side and to be disciplined and to fall into line, and they believed that the best way of doing this was to allow an execution five days after the surrender agreement was signed. German military law was in existence after the surrender, but the German officers clearly wanted to punish people who they believed had shamed their nation. There had been a very prolific job carried out by Joseph Goebbels, the Minister of Propaganda, throughout Hitler's time in command and during the Second World War to force the German civilians to believe that fighting in the military was the right course of action. They managed to convince millions what they were fighting for was right and was for the greater good, however they also taught that desertion was one of the most despicable and horrific crimes that someone could commit. There was a huge amount of desertion in the final days of the Second World War, when it was clear that the German army was going to lose, and even high-ranking members of Hitler's government and cabinet made a run for it, along with military generals, who could see the situation first-hand. Hitler called up the Volkssturm, a group of fighting civilians, armed with whatever weapons they could find to defend his Reich. But at the end of the conflict, thousands of Germans surrendered to their enemies. They would then be processed through various different channels for denazification. But for the people of Germany, desertion was said to have been one of the most serious crimes, and there were many people from all walks of life, who were sentenced to death for crimes that were said to have affected the nation's morale. During the Second World War, the British and Americans were more lenient to those men who were said to have deserted from their post or who may have committed a similar military offence. This was different from the First World War. However, the executions that occurred at the hands of the Allies as the German deserters were shot on the 30th of May 1945 was one which was strange. To win favour with the Germans, the Canadians willingly allowed two of them to be executed and even provided weapons for this illegal execution to take place. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.